Unity gizmos allow you to debug and test your games easily. And every game developer should know about it, because it will save you some headaches. It is often used to make some features in your game more designer friendly, so that your colleagues can understand it, even without you sending them tons of documentation. And what are the gizmos? Well, in my example, when I select the fuse box, you can see this red sphere in the middle, which is one of my gizmos, because I have been working on a system so that when the player comes to some object, he can inspect it, and this is basically the origin at where the camera will be looking. I have set it up using a vector 3, but you can imagine that if the gizmo wouldn't be here, then there is really no way for me to guess where the correct position is, so for that the gizmo can be pretty useful. And you can also hook it up with some custom editors, so for example I have this button, which will automatically put it to the middle, so right now we can't see any changes. Yep, it is here. How do we create the gizmo? It is actually pretty simple, we can just create a new script, or you can put it into one of your scripts that you have already made. All of the code for the gizmos will be writing to a private void on draw gizmos. You can see there is two types, one is on draw gizmos and second one is on selected. The second one will just show the gizmos only when you have selected the object. So we can take the first one for now. We can start just by creating a basic sphere, so gizmos dot draw and there is a lot of stuff. We will start with the sphere, just put some center and the radius. So I have a sphere with origin on the vector 0 and radius of 1. Put the script to some object and if you want to be able to see the gizmos in the scene, make sure that we have active the gizmos right here and if you want to see them in the game, you can also turn it on here. And now we can see the gizmo on the position 0, 0, 0, nothing too complicated. We can easily, for example, change the color, so just type gizmos, that color is equal and you can input anything you want. You can also make it transparent. When you are setting the color, you are basically setting the color of all the things that will be drawn next. So if I would draw another sphere, it will have the same color. So now we have two spheres with the color of red and transparency of 0.5. And when I go to the game and have the gizmos turned on, you can also see them here. The gizmos are all drawn at the runtime and are very performant. So for example, you can draw thousands of gizmos and it should still work. Or we can just set random color. So gizmos.color equals random.color. And you can see the color is constantly changing. It is probably not something that you would want to have in your game, but you can do all kinds of interesting stuff. I have just added a few more examples. You can see that we can obviously draw some cube. I have also added a variable to the inspector so that we can change its size. Then I have added some texture, which will just draw some texture that we select. We can also draw some meshes, wire spheres, and all of that stuff. I will show you more stuff later. Here you can see the wire sphere. This I think could be used, for example, for the range of the player so that he can pick up some items only in this range or some other stuff. I have selected the texture of club icon. <laughs> I'm not sure why it is rotated, but you can see that it is correctly showing us the texture. Also the mesh, it is correctly showing it. And I can set the size of the cube that is here. Now I have a few more interesting examples. They are both basically the same. They are just using different techniques to achieve that. For what I think it could be useful if you have some enemies and you want to show their path. So in the example one, I have a list of waypoints. I can add as many of them as I want. And you can see that it is always adding the gizmo, which is the point of the position. And it is connecting them with this thin line. It was pretty simple to make. I have the vector free array of the waypoints. Then I have the on draw gizmos. I am going through all of the waypoints. I am drawing the spheres. You can see that I have to be setting the color twice. First time it is to draw the spheres. And second time it is to draw the lines. In the lines you are basically just setting the start position and the end position. 
so I'm doing a bit of math here and it's all that it does. The second example is pretty much the same thing, just a bit more complicated. I can still add more of the elements to the array and it will correctly show. You can see that I can also change the y-axis, I can change it however I want. So this time I'm using cubes instead of just the thin lines. When we get to the script, you can see that it is starting to get a bit more complicated. So these spheres, I'm still drawing them the same way, then we have the same if, I'm again setting the color, but then I have to calculate the middle point, because as I said, I'm connecting these spheres using boxes. So we have the middle point, then we also need to get the distance, pretty simple, so that we can get the cube size. Then I'm setting the cube rotation using the quaternion dot look rotation, still pretty simple. And then the thing that is a bit more complicated but still useful is setting of the matrix. This will allow us to set a position, rotation and size of the object because when you are creating for example the sphere you can enter the size, the position, but you can't rotate it. So on the matrix I'm setting the position to the middle point, the rotation to the cube rotation and the cube size. Then I'm drawing new cube, but this time I'm setting the origin to zero because we have already set this stuff in the matrix. And the scale I'm also setting to just vector1 because we have done this stuff in the matrix and then we are just resetting the matrix. So yeah, this can be also useful to know how to change the rotation, the scale and all of that stuff manually using the matrices. And I think that it looks pretty nice. Next thing that can be pretty useful is drawing some rays. So I will be drawing a ray in the middle of the screen. For this I am getting a origin just using the camera. I don't like using the camera.main but in this case I am using it. Then I also get the direction, nothing too complicated, just get the forward vector of the camera. And then I am just drawing a simple line based on the origin, direction and multiplying the direction by 100 so that it is a bit longer line. And you can see it even when I'm not playing the game, so we can turn it on. Yep, and the ray should be pointing the direction that I'm looking at, I will look in the sky. Yep, that's correct. So this can be useful even when you are starting and you don't really know how rays works, or when you have some complex systems and it is all getting complicated. By the way, for drawing of the rays, you can also use debug.drawRay, which is pretty handy. Now I will show you how to implement the gizmos to your custom editor, because for me it feels a bit weird to have this void just in some script. And also in the custom editor you will be able to access more functionality of the gizmos. So we can delete that. I will add using unit editor. And we can create new class down here. You can obviously create your own script for the editor, which I recommend is that you create new script for the editor and you put it to the editor folder, otherwise it might cause some errors when you build the game. We want it to derive from editor. Up here we'll add the custom editor attribute and add the type of, which will be our gizmo class, so gizmo test, because I have added this editor class in my other mono behavior class, I will also add if unit editor. Now into the class we will add another attribute which will allow us to draw the gizmos, so just draw gizmo, and into the parentheses we need to type giz the gizmo type. And here is the extra functionality that I was talking about. So we can for example draw the gizmos only when the object is active or when it is selected in the hierarchy, which means that even when you select a child of some object, it should show. Non-selected, if you have nothing selected, it should also show. Pickable, which means that you will be able to click, for example, to the sphere and it will select you the parent object and so on. For now we can select for example the not selected. Then we'll need to add a static void because we don't actually have this editor on any object 
so that's why it has to be static. I will call it draw gizmos. To the parentheses, we'll add a reference for our gizmo test class, and then a reference for the gizmo type. And in the static void, we can type anything related to the gizmos the same way that we have been doing it in the gizmo test class. So, for example, gizmos that we can draw some cube. And if you want to access some parameters from the gizmo test class, we can take it just from the reference. So, gizmo script dot, and then we have, for example, the size. We can still set color and all that stuff. Yep, and now it is drawing us cube the same way as we have been doing it with just a normal class. Gizmos can be obviously used to some more complex stuff, such as some grids, so that you know where the grid will be located, some basic spawn points, some pathfinding, and so on. And now it is only up to you when and where you will use the gizmos. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.